Here is the main shaft. We are going to assemble the third gear first, which revolves around a lot of needle rollers. We are applying liberally with grease in order to keep all of these rollers in place. This helps the mounting of the third gear later on. We put them on one by one. Oh, I dropped one there. Not good. Then we take the third gear, <coughs> slide it carefully over all the needle rollers. There we go. This lock ring will keep the gear in place. The lock ring itself is secured to the shaft by the small plunger and spring. The spring goes into a hole in the main shaft. It's easier to locate it correctly with the help of a sharp pointed tool. The plunger is positioned by the help of a magnet like that. And then we turn it and the plunger comes out and locks the ring in place. Now it's time to turn the assembly upside down. And uh, Apply some grease to the shaft where the second gear is located. Okay. Apply liberately with grease so that we don't lose any of the needle rollers. Here is the hole for the plunger and spring that locks the second gear. Here is the second gear, which we will uh, slide over the needle rollers. Here we slide it over. To keep the second gear in place, we use a split trust washer together with a color. Here we can see the color. The color is kept in place with the same kind of spring and plunger as for the third gear. The thrust washer is put in place. Followed by the spring and plunger. Then it's time for the color. There are two tabs on the washer that fit two cutouts in the collar. You got to line up the tabs with the cutouts. Then you push the plunger all the way in and slide down the collar. Turn the collar and the gear is locked. Now the second gear revolves freely on the shaft. Next comes the synchro ring, in this case made by an aluminum bronze alloy. We put it in place and make sure that it grips the taper of the gear. Then it's time for the first gear assembly. We slide it over the main shaft, making sure that the tabs of the synchro ring is located correctly within the assembly. The distance ring is then put into its place. We drive home the bearing with its carrier. Here are the two locking collars that uh, were discussed in the previous video I made. They go in a groove here and lock the bearing in place on the main shaft. Then there is a sleeve that keeps those two collars in place. It goes over like so. And then there is a third clip. In order to make sure that it found its groove, we tap it gently with a mandrel. Finally, here is the main shaft with all of the gears in place. Third gear revolves freely as does second. The first gear assembly slides up and down. 
The outer ring pushes the synchro ring onto the taper of the second gear and some resistance can be felt, which is exactly how it should be. We put the third gear synchro ring in its place. Third and fourth gear synchro rings are of the same size. Next the third and fourth gear synchro hub is put into its place. Making sure that the tabs of the sync ring fits within the hub. Here is the completed main shaft, which really isn't too complicated to put together. Next, we take the input shaft and drive home its main bearing. The bearing is secured by a lock washer and a nut. Please notice that the nut has a left hand tread. Tighten it really hard. It's just a matter of tightening it real hard so nothing can move here. Knock the lock washer over so that it locks the nut. All straight cut gear sets are designed to take the same caged needle rollers as BJ8 boxes did. The tip of the main shaft will be resting in the caged needle rollers. Four caged needle rollers go into the leg gear, two on each side.